Okay, I think we is live. Welcome, welcome to, to another day. I'm just gonna flick my hair around. Looks better in the camera. I think, I think. Anyway, welcome to another day of Naruto goodness. It is day 66. It is a mercifully cloudy Sunday morning. And I say mercifully because it has been absolutely ridiculous in terms of um, in terms of temperature and so it's feeling colder it's feeling well it's not cold but it's not hot it's not absolutely sweltering hot either at the same time which I'm of course eternally grateful for um, and we're just gonna crack into it into things it is 8 19 and I woke up about 20 minutes ago and um, so if I'm, if I'm a bit slow then it'll be because I'm still waking up. Wait lad, what up? What up? How are you? How are things? I hope you're doing fabulously. Alright, and I haven't, I've realised I've got to do my roll call now. Roll call this morning ugh, will be similar to yesterday. I have a lovely giant cup of water. The same cup of water as last night. Um, fabulous. I have another lovely cup of water. Again, the same cup of water as last night. And ugh, another cup of tea. Another cup of tea. Um, and... My stomach is still cramping, so we're not having anything to eat. <laughs> uh, oh, applying for scholarships. Dang. What, um, what kind of scholarships are you applying for? And is there, like, is there anything special that you have to do for those apl applications beyond, beyond just saying, yo, I'm pretty good at this. Should hashtag give me a spot? Could, should totes give me a scholarship? Well, no, but goodness, I hope you um, I hope you get accepted in. That'd be fan that'd be amazing. Actually, no, sorry, it's not being like accepted in as such. It's more you get you'll get accepted to get the scholarship. Oh, it depends on it. Ah. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Because there's certain courses or things that you can get in if you get the scholarship slash grant slash bursary. Right. It's been a while since I've been around academia. Has it? No. I say it has. How long has it been? Six years, so not actually that long. Gonna be a battle. It's gonna be a battle of the melee combos today. I'm just bad. Lovely. But no. So um. So what scholarship are you applying for? Someone reference those. I've got transcripts. And I wanted an essay. Ooh. Ooh.
yeah, no, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd prefer an essay one over a, over a reference letter. And anything that's out of my control as to what it says, I, uh, I wouldn't want that. Even though it, an adult would have been able to put it far more eloquently than than I ever could. Did I ever apply for any scholarships? No, I didn't apply for scholarship. It wasn't a, it wasn't a, like a scholarship in the same way. It's a scholarship, but it was. I think of the fight like the end of year exams because in New Zealanders, sort of when you hit high school, um, there's so there's like three levels called NCEA or. Uh, oh my goodness, I don't even know what they're called. It, the Certificate of Educational Achievement. National Certificate of Educational Achievement? I'm guessing on that one, but it sounds right. Um, so you go NCA level 1, 2, and 3, and then obviously you get credits to go against each of the levels, and then um, depending on whether you achieved or you got merit, which is better, or you got excellence, which is the best. Um, then you can kind of get your NCE levels endorsed with merit or excellence or whatever. But then in your final year, you and the school slash teacher has to like let you do it. They have to basically vet whether whether you should do it or not. Um, as you have the chance to do like scholarship English or scholarship maths or scholarship science or e.g. physics, bio, or chem chemistry or whatever. But basically, you have to you have to say, "Yo, I think I want to try this," and then the teacher and the school have to be like, either yes or yes or no. Um, I figured out that they are far less likely to say yes than they are no because I think the schools get measured on how many students took it and how many students achieved it, so they're less likely to say no, no, less likely to say yes um if there's a shadow of it out in their mind that you're not gonna be able to do it because it is difficult it is hard um they even like there was this one lady oh one lady one girl in my year who was an absolute beast when it came to maths and science like absolute beast and they wouldn't let her do any of the scholarship sciences like they were like no this is just ridiculously difficult so nope soz um Applied for three and you still got 20 to go. Dang. Well, I hope, I hope that you get more than 10. I hope, I hope that you get lots. I have faith. But no, but dang, good on you. There's so many, there's, there was a lot of people that, um, a lot of people that kind of had the sentiment, oh, don't, don't bother with scholarships, because, you know, it's just extra work for, for little to no payout, and I'm like, um, what do you mean little to no payout? Like, taking a scholarship anything is, like, even, to even, like, go for a scholarship thing is, a, like, something to be proud of. So there was just this, this feeling of just general like, oh, ew, scholarship stuff, gross. And I'm just like, bruh, most people would kill to have a scholarship to things. But anyway, anyway um, got a clever title for an inflation essay. Ooh. Is it just an essay just, is it is it on a particular, like is it for or against inflation or is it just a neutral, neutral one? I suppose if it's... Actually, no, I suppose, suppose no, one, no one really likes inflation, so... Um, oh. I'm trying to, like, I'm thinking of something to do with, like, balloons and... Part, and I'm thinking of, like, birthday parties. Like, um, inflation bringing the consumer spending bringing consumer spending to a uh, inflation sending the balloon of consumer spending to 
a to a uh, to a disastrous end. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, or inflation sending the balloon of consumer spending out with a bang. <laughs> I don't know. Even though I wouldn't, I wouldn't say inflation's so exciting that it's that it's saying something out with the bang. Um, and I like I like your attitude of getting of getting them to laugh. No one could understand it. Why why I needed to? I would try and inject humor into like every essay that I would do. Like every essay, no matter what it is, no matter what topic. I would have to throw some kind of humorous element into it. All my speeches at school had to have funny bits in them. It was just, I don't know what it was, but it was just, if I can make them laugh, if you can make them laugh, then you're already half, you've already, you're, you're halfway there. You're halfway there. They're far more, far more receptive to everything else, everything else that you say. Okay, what other what other words? Well, if we, if we do like word cloud of things to do with things to do with inflation, so you got balloons, then you do birthday parties. Um, um, mm. Oh, flo oh yes, floating. Floating. Um. Popping, like popping candy. No, no, no. It's not popping candy. <laughs> um. Air. Wind. Breath. Large and in charge. Chunky yet funky. Um. That's actually yeah, true. But then, but then, is is that too ca casual? A uh, is that too casual an MSA title? Or, may or maybe not actually. Possibly not. Mm. Inflation. Blowing the something of something sky high. Let's. Then I just need to think what that something or something is. You know, because then, because blowing something sky high is kind of is what a bomb does. So maybe not. <laughs> hmm. 
feel like I feel like we get it work for us. Possibly do. Floating, blowing air, something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Blowing the something. Um, inflation. Is it all just hot air? And then you talk about it and they say how it's not. <laughs> how it's actually a very extremely serious issue that has wide reaching economic consequences. Yeah, because then if you posit your question at the start of the essay, and then you have your you expound upon that question in the essay introduction. You do your body of your essay, and then in the conclusion you say, "So is inflation just a bunch of hokey 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 to pokey, hot air, blah blah blah?" Then you can be like, um, "Gosh, diddly darn, it ain't." Yeah, yeah, high enough to float a balloon. Because this was then the so, because the thing is, so in your in your essay, what are you? So what's the kind of like the main points that you're that you're talking about? Because in in the essay itself, are you um, are you talking about? Are you just talking about how high it is or? how it got to be so high or like what's the sort of um what's the word what's the word I'm trying to get it um because then you want you'll want the title in some way to connect to to connect to what you're saying even if it's loose just some some thing Um, actually, I don't want that one. I want wind style, Russ and Shrikin. And we've got another young Benji, goodness. Or you can say, like, inflation. Is the economic balloon about to burst? And then... And then... And then the economic balloon is... The recession. Possibly. Possibly.
Or maybe you don't even say, is the economic balloon. Just say, inflation. Is the balloon about to burst? Just have it like that. Because then they'll be like, intrigued. They'll be like, what balloon? You mean the inflation balloon? Tell me more. And then in your essay, you're like, bam. Whatever you say in your essay. Yeah, it is. And then... And then, your final line, so the final line in all my essays was always a cliché of some kind. Cliché, trope, joke, cheesy, whatever, and then you bring it back full circle. So, and then your final line is, so, inflation. Um, uh, I don't know, yeah, I don't, I don't know what a, what a witty ending would be. should be going pretty well. Or have I? No, I think I've been getting the, I'm under the illusion that I've been going pretty fast. Gonna do another one of those. Might actually do three of these. And it sucks to know that her ultimates do not do enough damage. Well, at least that fight was mercifully short. I hate playing as Ten Ten. She's awful. Actually, no, I lie. I hate playing as Ten Ten when I'm trying to be fast. I don't mind playing her normally, ish, ish. Um, but don't like her when you have to when you have to, when I'm trying to. Trying to be a bit fast. You got it? Ooh, ooh. Pray do tell. The crop does the society. <laughs> I like it. I like it. on LinkedIn. I don't hardly go. Oh my goodness. LinkedIn has now decided to tell me everything my old boss is doing. Okay. Oh, make sure it's crop duster.
Okay, I got another one of those. And I might even do I might even do another one. Seeing on if I Yeah, I'm gonna do one more. All these 10 10 fights are going so fast and I'm living. Living that I don't have to waste precious time and resources. Fab. Do it. Yeah, make sure it's crop dust, not crop dust. Because if you, if, I could be wrong, but if you're going for like the, the, um, the plane that flies and drops all the lovely stuff um it's crop duster but no go with it do it risks pay off and send it and good luck you've only got 20 more to go <laughs> the shikamari don't have to scream that shikamaru and that one oh and i'm making good time as well i'm making excellent time i believe I'm making probably excellent time because I'm being helped by the fact that the characters I've got no puppet users which is fabulous I've got none of those pesky kankaros and chios and sussuries and I haven't got people I haven't got AI against Tintin that is just being ridiculous okay Sheena and Jugo Mm. So, uh, so are all your um, are all the scholarships that you're going for? Are they for um, are they for like similar things? I guess like are they all like, economics or math scholarships or English scholarships or um, or are you doing like a mixy mixy mash? Nice. Yeah, I think I think it's um, I think it's uh, it's probably it's probably good good that they vary in the sense that like if you had to do, if you had to do like twenty English scholarships, all of them requiring an essay, you'd be essayed out by by number five, and you're like, okay, I'm good. Maybe I don't want to study English if this is all I have to do. As much as I would love, absolutely love, to study something like linguistics or just some language thing, I don't think I could write many essays. As much as I guess I was good at them, I guess, um, I hated them. And then my parents just couldn't understand it. They're like, how, how, like, you can't be good at something and not like it. And I'm like, it's extremely easy to be good at something and not like it. Called a job. <laughs> I'm 
Like they just could not grasp that that maybe the subjects that you're good at at school doesn't necessarily mean you enjoy them or like you want you want your life to be centered around them. Just need, just need one little thing. There we go. Lovely. Right. Onoki and Conan. Lady, you're trying to trap Gradesh and it's not working. We're just flying through these fights, and I live such a change from last week. Last week? No, it was only like three days ago. Yeah, it was only like three days ago. We're already losing track of time. I know that the AI, once they're doing a chakra dash, they don't ever like cancel out of it. Even though I don't actually think you can cancel out of it. So I could be wrong on that one. There we are. Fabulous. And then we've got Young Choji and Young Hinata. Oh, and so, so today, uh, me and the boys' main job is to build a vegetable garden. Um, we bought all the materials yesterday. Um, I bought myself a lovely little watering can, although it's metal. Or like galvanized zinc actually and I've just got this funny feeling that it's gonna probably gonna come to bite me in the hot days because it's gonna be too hot to hold too hot to handle um, and uh, and but yeah so I've got my cute little watering can and we've got um, bought all the wood or like nine meters of wood that we're all just gonna cut um, cut into uh, cut into loveliness and then build my one meter by one meter vegetable garden load it up and then I've bought some broccoli and some silver beet seedlings to put in the little vegetable garden so hopefully um, I don't let all this, these things die by the time they're ready to harvest except because my goal my goal for the year I've got a big big the handwritten thing of my goals for 2023 and number goal number four is have grown broccoli in the vegetable garden and had some for tea so I'm, almost, I'm, I'm on my way to that. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, what ice cream? Ooh, 
the ice cream flavor that we have in the freezer at Lamo. It's called Awesome Salted Caramel Seduction. So it's a lovely caramel ice cream with salted caramel bits. I wouldn't say they're chunks, just little like bits of salted caramel goodness. It is delightful and it is delectable and it is fab. There's a, there's a particular brand um, or no, a particular particular line that a brand does um, in these like gold gold looking tubs, and they just have the most insane flavors. And this is like they've got like a mint chocolate one that is just, mm, mm -mm, it is just beautiful. They've got a boysenberry stracciatella, which is like boysenberry ripple, but it's got like chocolate flakes in it. Oh, man, it's 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 something else. They've got a toffee baked churro flavor is just amazing, incredible they've got a cookie dough um cookie dough chunks one again delightful um and then they've got the salted caramel one they've got a fairy bread which is um if you're a if you don't know what fairy bread is you'll be probably disgusted actually no too many people get disgusted and i think it, i think they're all wrong is you get a slice of bread you would put some butter on it and then you sprinkle hundreds and thousands of sprinkles on top. And that is fairy bread. And it is a staple food. I'm going to say it's a staple food. Um, in, uh, in Especially in Australia. But also here in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, so they have a flavour of ice cream that is fairy bread flavoured. So, yes. So, um, yes, yeah, so this particular brand is just... Mwah, it is just beautiful. But then again, all ice cream is beautiful. All ice cream deserves to be eaten. Like, if you are an ice cream manufacturer, you are doing the world a service. You are bringing joy to the masses. And because the beauty of ice cream is that you're like, oh, but I'm like, I'm lactose intolerant. I can't eat ice cream. I'm like, um, yes you can. There's dairy free ice cream. And it's not even, and the best thing about it is it's not even like, you know, you get some dairy free and gluten free alternatives. They're just like, what the hell? How did they even ever think that this tasted good? Yeah, you don't get that with dairy free ice cream. Dairy free ice cream is always delicious. So. Ice cream is just one of those things that you just always win. Always win. D oh, Dairy Queen. Peanut Buster Parfait. Oh, damn. God damn, that sounds good. So I, I'm i so upset that we don't have a Dairy Queen here. <laughs> New Zealand, I'm so upset. The closest, the closest thing we have is a Wendy's Super Sundays. Different to the Wendy's Burgers, but like there's another Wendy's that does, um, another Wendy's that does like Super Sundays. But even then, I can't actually remember having seen one recently. Hope they haven't like closed. But anyway, that's like the closest thing we've got. The, like the closest thing um, I think oh we got like frozen yogurt places I guess which are all, all, again delicious um, ice creams um, handsome cousin um, and I say handsome from an outsider not from ice cream's perspective um, and yeah that's all we got makes me sad because on um on the tour of on the foodie tour of america that me and the boy eventually do at some point in our lives when we have money and time um we, we're gonna we're going to dairy queen we're going to the wendy's we're going to where are we going we're going to hang on i had a list i had a list down and i can't remember which book i wrote it in but i had a list Oh, here we are. Going to Freddy's to get a patty melt. We're going to Red Lobster to get a maple glazed chicken. 
We're going to Sweet Frog to get a Froyo. We're going to the Six Flags or Carol Wins Water Parks. We're going to Haystack Tavern. We're going to Reno's Pizza to get Stromboli. We're going to Arby's to get a roast beef sandwich and Sunny's to get a brisket and pulled pork thingamabob. We're getting to Bojangles to get some chicken. Um, and we're going to Mellow Mushroom to get some calzones. That is many stops on our 100 stop American food tour. So if you have any other recommendations to go on that list, by all means. Oh, and I was, I'm, I'm just curious because I feel like I can't be the only person in the world that's like this. When, like, say you've got like a favorite restaurant or just any restaurant or any takeaway place that you um, that you go to, um, and let's just say like there's just a menu item that is just amazing, just always good every time you have it. Do you always just get that menu item, or? do you always try something different? Because I am the kind of person that if I find something I like and it is amazing, I'm just going to order that every single time. Like I'm, I'm not, like I'm not, um, I'm not experimenting because I know that this one menu item is going to give me love and give me, give me kindness every single time. Um, but like, I don't think I've ever found anyone else who also does that, will only ever have one thing from every place. I mean, it's probably just me not being adventurous, but I feel like I can't be the only one. Oh, you're Canadian. My apologies. Oh my god, of course. Of course. Toby and Sussery. Oh great. Now now we're getting to the rubbish fights. Eh. Nah, we should be okay. Oh an eggs Benedict. <laughs> I'm the same if there's any if there's ever like any if it's a cafe or a restaurant we're going for like a breakfast or a brunch sort of thing if there's any kind of like pancakes or waffles like done like that is that is all i'm getting every single time um like or french toast and it's the same, same with the boy he always gets a big breakfast or the equi an equivalent of a big breakfast Although I think, I think probably the only place, there's two places that we've been to where I like genuinely couldn't decide what I was going to get because everything sounded amazing. And which is odd for me because I'm an extremely, I say I've just got, I say I've just got acquired tastes. The Boyd says, well, the world says I'm fussy. But I will avoid anything that has like condiment sauces on it. I will avoid anything that has like heavy onion component or heavy mushroom component. Um, my like my choices of menu things, I limit myself quite heavily, just because I'm I'm fussy. Um, but this one place just had everything on the thing. Had sounded amazing and like something I would want to eat. Um, I try no. I haven't tried IHOP. Now, isn't it like is doesn't it stand for like International House of Pancakes or something? Cause are there pan is it waffles or pancakes they do? Oh, it is International Hands Pancakes. Fab, great. But no, I haven't. I 
haven't been there and I want to go. I want to go so bad. There's just so many places that the world has that that little old New Zealand just just won't get. I mean, more so because these international places don't look to expand to New Zealand, but we've got Taco Bell, Wendy's, KFC, Burger King, Macca's, Subway, Domino's, Pizza Hut. I feel like there's another one. Carl's Jr. We've got all them. We've got all the main ones, I guess. Um, but no, but we need an IHOP. Four, ten inch. Oh my god. Oh my lordy. That would be like. If that was served in New Zealand, that would be like. $30 or what was them? So like 18 US dollars I think the equivalent. Oh, I'm gonna okay, I'm, I'm looking at the IHOP menu and I'm gonna cry because it's out of reach. Well out of reach for now. IHOP menu. Okay. Oh, pancakes 24 7. Already I'm in love. Oh, error 109. Access denied. They don't. Oh, they, they don't want people from. The owner of the website has banned the country or region your, your IP address is in. Okay, let's hope someone else is a bit more happy. Why would they do that? Let's go to IHOP Niagara Falls PDF. Uh, open with drive. Okay, PDF's loading. IHOP Niagara Falls is a bit more compassionate. Let's put a smile on your plate. <gasps> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Straw. Oh, New York cheesecake. Oh no, double blue <laughs> Mexican trilishes. Oh my lord. Cinestack. Layered with cinnamon roll filling. They've even got pro lemon ricotta mixed berry protein pan. Oh my god, they've even got thick and fluffy French toast. Oh my god. Oh, they've got waffles. They've got crepes. They've got breakfast combos. Oh my god. Smokehouse combo. Jumbo sausage, link, two eggs, hash browns and buttermilk pancakes. Oh, that's right, because sausages, uh, your sausages don't look like sausages. <laughs> they look like burger patties. Country fried steak and eggs with pancakes. Sirloin tips and eggs. Split decision. Two eggs, two bacon strips, two pork sausage links, two buttermilk pancakes and one slice of our new thick and fried. There's not a vegetable to be seen on there, but I'm oh so happy. Oh my lordy loo. Not a vegetable in sight. Oh no, there's some fruit. They're, they've got fruit. They've got omelettes. They've got burrito ultimate steak burgers. What is this place? What is this place? This is like... This... Oh. Choose your griddle combo. Choice of two slices, classic strawberry banana, or lemon macrata, mixed berry thick and fluffy french toast. Two. Oh. 
you've changed my life right now. I've just, I've kind of just had like a, a spiritual experience. I've actually just fully just like, it's like the voice, it's like the image of God has, has peered into my soul and I have just achieved a level of nirvana that I thought was unachievable. I have achieved the spirituality of a Tibetan monk after a 10 year vow of silence. I have seen the light. I don't even know what to say after that. After, just everywhere I look, it was just, it was just so beautiful. Thank you for introducing me to this. Like I knew, I knew it did, I knew it just did pancakes, but I thought it was the crappy, crappy pancakes in comparison that we, I hop splashes. I mean, and just the best, the, the craziest thing is, is that the only vegetables you see on here is in the entrees. Um. I just, I'm, I'm just speechless. I'm just absolutely speechless. 100% Canadian Angus beef ste steak. Like I've literally got a tear in my eye. That is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Like the dark part of my brain is is wanting to say, well, no wonder forty percent of people in the states in Canada are obese. Actually, no, not Canada, states. But yeah, because I would be too if I had that. And I would be going there for breakfast and lunch and dinner every single day and it just eating I would have every heart disease known to man because that is all I would eat. I'm gonna sh I'm showing the boy that and I'm like bro we're getting on a plane right now like sorry trip to England cancelled we're going to America slash Canada slash everywhere everywhere in North America we're going we're going we're going all to all of it and we're, and we're just living in IHOP or we're living in a motel near like round the block from IHOP and now I'm angry because in Man of Steel I think think is that a man of steel they like destroy an ihop disgusted 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 and appalled and disappointed that such a that such an establishment was treated so poorly by superheroes true 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 Is the, is the snow like, does it get quite thick? Is it like you've actually, it burns your legs to, to get through it all? Osama, what up? What system? PC slash Steam. No, and I don't want to do a rematch. But I'm playing on an Xbox controller. Um. Mm -mm. Neji and Sakura. Okay, actually, I'm going to update the list. 54. It'll be 54. 
Uh, flights remaining. Two, five, four. Lovely chubbly. Meji. And... Did I just say young Sakura I did? There we are. If it's deep enough, it makes a more difficult walk. Ouch. Yeah, I probably actually would would go to it in Canada then. If um if if it takes a if I can burn calories while I'm trying to get to it, then most definitely. And Selasama, I would love to, but alas, so the <laughs> um the what's it um what I'm trying to do is um, as you can see by my little counter at the top. I'm trying to get through a hell of a lot of fights um, and so I'm not doing um, I'm not doing a like play with viewers kind of thing at the moment um, that's not to say that in how long I've got in about an hour's time um, if you can wait an hour I don't mind doing a couple of quick quick um, online matches slowly 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 getting better with ultimate jutsu triggers and knowing knowing the perfect situation to try and try and hit with them yeah because was the so like um because wasteland the so i was originally born in ireland so we got snow in the in the winter um it was delightful um i we moved to new zealand when i was Three, four, four, three, three. Yes. Um, and so New Zealand has snow in places, um, e.g. The, the Alpine Mountains, um, not much else. Um, sometimes in the winter time in the South Island where I am, you might get a little bit of snow but definitely not enough for you to like have to get your full snow gear on when you're just going to the shops outside um and i just i just want so so badly to go and just play in the snow like just have like just to experience going to the supermarket with snow gloves on and like a snow jacket goodness why does everyone scream so like violently when you when you when you kill them in the well not kill the strong word defeat them in the middle of a combo they just do this scream of death it's crazy Oh, I 
like that. I think that, that that's actually kind of neat. I have a, can't say I've ever played G oh, GTA. I mean, I've seen seen people play it, but I can't say I've ever, I've ever been one to play it myself. But I like that. I think that that's a that's neat. You never played during that time. Does it does it does it make everything harder to do? Like, like, do they, does it actually, like, your character has to trudge through snow? Do they? Oh. Oh, they've even put the physics in. I can't, I, I dig that. I, I dig that, uh, that effort. <laughs> True, if you're having to do it day in, day out, it's like, it ain't special. I'm, I, like, I can't be bothered. I come, I come to games to escape, not to, not to just... Have a life simulator. Right, oh, come on, Eno. My goodness gracious me. Right. We can't do substitution. There we go. Finally. Gracious. Yeah, true. Actually, is there any games I'm thinking of there? I'm just like, oh no. No, I do this. It's too much already. I don't think so. I don't believe so. But no, but I can f fully understand where, where your, your mates would be coming from now. Should be it. No. There we are. Scream of death. Why is that? In the middle of a combo. Um, a key. Ten ten. Ugh. Ugh. And young keeper. I think I could do one more of these. Yes. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Lovely. Or should I say nice? Because we ended on 69. Uh, and 
Tintin. Right. Okay, the clouds are still the clouds are still there. Um, I'm just really, really, really hoping that the clouds don't part and we get sun beating through um, for the rest of the morning. Because I would like to build my vegetable garden with relative comfort. Here we go, lovely. Right, Naruto Toad and Dunzo. Just looking at the fights to come and we actually should should be okay. I can't see any particularly horrible matchups. So my goal today is to get to at the very least six thousand 200 would be lovely um, I mean ideally ideally 6,190 would be even better um, so I'll see how I go So where are we at after this one? After this one we're at Excuse me, oh my goodness. I'm about to say something in my throat caught. Um, one thing that I've been uh, thinking of, and I just really, really hope that it spells something good for, for the game industry, I think, is um, whatchamacallit. So, um, so, what's it? Star Wars Fallen Jedi Survivor. Je Jedi Four, Jedi, Star Wars Jedi, Survivor, um, gets it got so it got delayed to April, which I was I was very excited for it, but alas, alas, I would rather a finished game than a not a not finished game. So, um, so that got delayed, and there's heaps and heaps and heaps of games getting delayed and cancelled. And all of this, all of this goodness, and I think what it's, the kind of the feeling I'm getting, because, you know, combined with the thing that, like, Ubisoft is cancelling all these projects, and just all of the stuff's going on, delays, cancellations, online services being discontinued, all of this stuff, and I'm feeling the game industry kind of became this big, uh, over the last 20 years, I guess you could say just became this huge 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 industry I think even bigger than the film industry to some degree I think um, either it made more money than the film industry or it did, it did there was something anyway um, one, it's like the biggest entertainment industry on the planet kind of thing um, and 
so because of that, you know, the game companies and the studios <coughs> have just been putting more and more money into it and just trying to make money from the boom as much as possible. So they've got, if you think about just the amount of games that has been coming out, or rather, should I say, the amount of projects that a studio has at any one time is so much more than used to be. Or at least at least the big studios like, like Ubisoft and Bethesda and um, Sony Entertainment, Sony Interactive Entertainment Studios, um, Square Enix, especially Square Enix, um, and all of that sort of thing. And I feel now, with all of these cancellations and all of the stuff that's going on, my hope, I don't know if it will actually be the case, but my hope is that game studios are going to realise we are... we aren't serving ourselves or the fans by having so much going on at once. I think we, you know, obviously they've got different, you don't need the whole studio working on a single game at any one time. That's the reason why they've got divisions. Like Santa Monica Studio can work on, work on God of War while Naughty Dog can do, hopefully another Jack and Dexter game would be fabulous. They sort of forgot that that IP existed. Um, and, I just, I just hope that it means that, like, production times are gonna go down. No, sorry, production times are gonna. Actually, no, yeah, no. That dev cycles reduce because they've got more resources go into one thing. Um, and that they're gonna not gonna rush a game to be marketed and announced when the developers aren't comfortable that they haven't that they aren't comfortable that they have it at a point where it would be ready because i mean and i say back in the day what felt like the golden age mid 2000s early 2000s you'd know about it i mean and this is also coming from me who wasn't a denizen of the interwebs up until you know a frequent denizen of the interwebs um or even news, news sites for that matter, at that time. I was still in primary school. So I could be completely off the mark on this one, but what it felt like anyway was that a game would come out, or a game would, would be marketed and announced quite close to its actual release date. They didn't have these, oh, we'll announce FF7 Remake at E3 2015, and it doesn't come out till 2020. It was 2020, wasn't it? God, it was 20... It was 2020, wasn't it? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so, you know, not have all of that sort of thing. And then people are like, okay, well, what the hell's going on? Oh, we're still hiring... We're, we're hiring another scenario writer. It's like, sorry, you're what? Like, two, two three years in and you're only just doing the scenario? Like... Um, that's like at the early, early, early stages of game development. That's like, that's, that's early. So you're just like, okay, well, what the hell have you been doing for the last three years? And then you just get worried and you panicked and then FF7 Remake comes out and it's amazing. And you're just like, okay, all my fears are allayed. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel, I feel like the kind of the, the dev or the game production bubble has burst or is, is about to because of all the cancellations and delays and everything I feel that game studios are going to just rain well, I, my hope is that they just rain this, this whole stuff all in they work on fewer projects put more resources into them so the, so the production cycles become less or fewer, um, shorter, that's the word I'm trying to say, shorter, um, and yeah, just, I don't know, I just feel that it's become, because it's become the, biz the, the business 
the money maker that it is I feel that just the executives in the suits are running the show a little bit too much and causing all of these problems like Square Enix just said that they something like an 18 or a 28 percent decline in profits last year I mean that can be attributed to a lot of things but they had a number of games come out um but yeah, and, and I suppose another FF14 expansion didn't come up. But you know, here's, here's, here's hoping this year is a bit better for Square Enix. As in like, FF16 is going to be, it's going to be their baby. And it, it will be good. As much as much as I don't want to sound like a fangirl and just say, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be good no matter what. And get phantom menaced. And you look back on it in hindsight in 10 years and realise, oh, actually it was, eh, it was mid. It was okay. Um, no, FF16 will be fantastic. If it's the team behind FF14, it is just going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful. And I'm taking two days off of work for it. And I'm going to be streaming that, that S word for like 16 hours. I'm not going to rest until I've had my fill of that game. And I think my other my other thing to go along with the um, to go along with the production cycle thing is I don't know I feel that <clears throat> I feel that there just seems to be I don't want to be cliche so it's just too much negativity. But it is. I feel like nowadays when a game gets announced or released or whatever, there's just this overwhelming vitriol for anything to do with the game. And it just, <clears throat> I'm kind of just like getting like tired of it. It's just like, you look at Forspoken, before the game's even come out, people are like, this is awful, not getting it. I mean, I wasn't particularly... Well, no, I actually was excited for it to begin with. And then I suppose I didn't like the... I have a, I'm, I'm very... Um, I'm not anti it. I don't have a particular fondness for, like, isekai stories where the person who's been isekai'd um, is just amazing at everything. I don't like that. I don't dig that. That sort of stuff. It had nothing to do with the dialogue. Um, and, um, but yeah, but then, so the game hadn't even come out, and people were already saying it's the worst, like, the worst thing ever. Who wrote this dialogue? What the hell is this? And then the people, you know, once it got released and the people are playing it, they're like, oh, actually, it's not even that bad. In context, all of that dialogue makes sense in context. Um, and yeah it's actually a pretty decent game if you give it a chance and then like overnight the vitriol stopped the hatred of it stopped um because you know the overwhelming majority no there just seem to be more people saying yeah it's actually pretty pretty okay than than not um and then it's just, it just feels like it's just the cycle. People are, it's like people are wanting something to be bad. They want a reason to hate on a game. Like I'm, I'm just, it's, it's, it is, yeah, they want, it, it just feels like they want a game to be bad. And I, I just, I find that kind of mindset a bit disappointing, I guess. 
<gasps> and Simo, what up? Glad life is nice, and I'm glad that I can make your life nice. That is my goal here. <laughs> but oh, how are things? How are you? It is lovely to see your name as always. Sixty-six. We're we're three away. We are three away. From the nicest number. From the nicest number in the world. Which will be, so, not next week, but the following week. It'll be on a Thursday. We hit, we hit 69. Um, right, Orochimaru and Mifune. I need to, I still need to like, I need to do something, like, I need to buy a whole thing of party poppers. So like on, on the special occasions, like hitting 60, day 69, hitting day 100, um, doing the last day, I can just, I can do a party popper and, th and that's my, my celebration. <laughs> No, I was um, I was just I was thinking, I'm sort of thinking about it a little bit more in my mind, um, just around around the delays and the, cause I was thinking about you know, do the do, do the delays like game delays and game cancellations mean that the industry is starting to or game studios are starting to do less simultaneous projects or not doing a project for the sake of it maybe um maybe getting a little bit more creative or particular about what they do um and then you know and then that led me on okay well then people just being unnecessarily i think unnecessarily negative about games so a lot of time before they've even come out um and then I'm sort of putting those two together and I'm thinking, is the fact, is the reason, or is the catalyst for game studios? Well, actually, no, the catalyst for game studios doing this would be because of the negativity. Oh, I would rather they don't just absolutely sh shouldn't like on our game to have them back. Um, so we'll, we will put our time in. You know, we, we will make sure it's good. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yes, no, I heard that too. That there may be Silent Hill 2 remake. It seems it's it's similar to Hollywood. I think we're we are in the the age of remakes and remasters, which, unlike films, where I think don't remake something. Just they can just watch the original unless the original was rubbish in which case i'm all for a remake um all for a remake if the original wasn't good but don't remake anything that had was successful and had a good following because like why are you doing that um but i think for games i think i think games is a medium i think remakes i don't mind them i honestly don't mind them And to be honest, I do think they the silent if they do if there is a Silent Hill 2 remake, I do feel that they will do it very well. Um because I've heard apparently is it the Resident Evil 4 remake? Um apparently I don't know I won't say it's 
is it previews? Yeah, um, <clears throat> apparently it is exceptional. Um, same with the Dead Space remake. Dead Space remake and Resident Evil 4 remake apparently are top notch. Like, yes, thank, thank the devs of this game. It is beautiful. It is amazing. Um, they're not games I'll play because I'm too scared. I'm just too much of a scared girl. Um, but uh, but I can appreciate a good game when I see one. And um, even though I don't play scary games, um, I love war of scary games. So I uh, so I um, so I'm kind of like the the law expert so then if when the boy plays it because horror games are his are his thing especially zombie ones um so when the boy plays it and he doesn't understand the story bit i'll be like well um it's explained from this thing because when you pick up this item then this character does this thing and then there's like a subtle like hint that this character has done this thing because of this thing that happens and he's like ah i got you but then of course i'll, I'll never play the game myself I mean, like, yeah, I definitely, definitely don't, don't, don't do well. It's scary. I think I was playing, I don't know why I started playing Gears of War, but I played Gears of War, and when I start something, I have to finish it. Um, did I just play as May? I've completely forgotten, lost track. I'll do this, it puts on an odd number. I didn't. I did, didn't I? Anyway, um, playing Gears of War, so I had to finish it, and then there's these berserker enemies that berserker enemies that i think for the first couple of encounters you can't defeat them but basically they charge you like they fully charge you and then they can like break through walls and pillars and things so you have to get them to charge and uh, through a wall to do an entryway that you then run through and it's just i probably had about five heart attacks on this one section because you're in sort of like a <clears throat> um, enclosed building it's all like a little gardens like a sort of like a mishmash between a greenhouse and a museum garden sort of thing um, and obviously a berserker comes so then you come out of a corridor and you're walking along the, and you just see he just smashes through the wall beside you and then because you, you turn around because you're trying to run and you turn around and you just hear him go like Wah! and then like charge behind you and I'm just like my heart's going about 20,000 miles an hour and then he smashes into the pillar beside me and I'm jumping I'm jumping every single time um, and then I'll go through another through another side door through a corridor and then boom smashes through the wall beside me again and I'm my soul has already left my body about five times at this point and I just can't deal but then I think you eventually I think on the second time luckily there's only two moments of this in the game actually now I think about it um, luckily the second time you sort of lure him outside and then you can use the hammer of dawn and just completely wreck him with a space laser um, but um, before that point I died and Gears of War isn't even like a horror game it's literally just an action game so if I'm already getting jumping out of my skin or just an action game I've got absolutely no chance no chance in hell with the horror and Kalkia. I'll update the list after this one. I think. Yeah, I think. Do you think? Do you think that? Actually, no, because there are there are a lot of horrors. There are a lot of horrors that don't need to rely on a jump scare, I guess. But yeah, I think it's like it's like a cheat. It's a. It's like with films. It's a cheap. 
it's a cheap tactic that you're guaranteed to get some reaction but it's like are you being are you being really creative with your horror here guys yes yeah there are i'm just trying to think what game because there's heaps of games that creep me the absolute hell out I think there's a lot, it might just be me, but there's a lot of games that creep me out. Or just moments that I'm just really unsettled. Um, I know that, if, oh, even though Control wasn't a horror game, it was a psychological thriller. Um, I, playing that one with headphones, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I tried and I couldn't. <laughs> um... Um, <gasps> Crisis One into Alien Bay. Oh hell nah! Oh no 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 <laughs> no 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 no! Oh, I couldn't deal. I would not be able to deal. Anything underwater with giant, like giant moving, giant unsee sea creatures. Nope, can't do it. No way. No way in hell. Um. Because what other games? What other games creep me out? Oh, it's obviously the um I don't know, Every time, I, every time I think about it, if you haven't played The Outer Wilds, I will. This is what this is one of those games that I will just rave about. Ever since I played it, or oh, when did I play it? Probably a few months ago. Um, I played it. Is um, if you haven't played The Outer Wilds, and it's 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 if you're not a fan of completely open-ended you don't actually know what the goal is um you kind of just go around and explore places and you you're getting like you're getting nuggets of a story that has happened around you um and you eventually you eventually get to a point where you're like okay i think i know what i'm meant to be doing i think i know what i'm meant to be doing but before then completely open ended but but fantastic game it is so so good anyway um that has got a planet which i avoided because i knew what was going to happen and i dreaded it because i realized that you actually had to do it to get to the true ending i guess or well, the, the canon ending is yeah um is a giant anglerfish um in uh but it's like you're not in water it's kind of like you're in like a super super foggy like it's like this gray brown fog everywhere and then so there's like um there's when you when you look into it so it's essentially it's, it's like pocket dimensions within pocket dimensions so like you go into like the seed um like a like a literal seed um and you go into it and you can see these like five white lights and so some of those lights will be other seeds that you then go into and it's like you're in a like it's I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Since it's like each seed is inside is like another pocket dimension with other seeds and it's weird. But some of the white lights are um, anglerfish lights. Um, and the, uh, you find elsewhere on another planet um, that the anglerfish are blind and they um, react to sound. Um, and so you're just, you know, woe, woe be to the adventurer that just rocket thrusts right into it and suddenly you just hear this roar and these anglerfish all just start like going towards you and they're, they're too fast for you to outrun unless you know exactly what you're meant to do and you know exactly what you have to do um that i was avoiding for the entire game um until i had to do it and it was the scariest thing ever um yeah Yes, no, and the, yeah, the scariness of the, of this, oh, scariness of the empty side, just, like, even, what's that, Banjo-Tooie, which are, like, the cutest, well, I say the cutest, you know, just cute little rare, um, 
you know, adventure games, collectathons. And then, of course, in the second game, they have to have an underwater level. Um, and the giant and the boss, um, the boss of it, is, which you don't actually have to beat to finish the game, surprisingly. Um, but the, the boss of that particular level is a giant anglerfish, again blind. Um, but you're inside, you go inside Davy Jones' locker. Um, and uh, so you're this giant locker and there's this giant anglerfish. So there's not much space around it. Um, and basically just to beat him... You, he's like he's got his eyes closed, and you need to shoot like some of the warts on his body, like glow. So you just have to like fire missiles at his um at his warts, and then when you hit enough of them, his eyes open, and then you just like missile his eyes. It's really like weird. But then once you've beaten him, um, he turns upside down because obviously he's a fish. Um, but then, at any point in time, you can go back into Davy Jones' locker, and it's dark, and you just see his, like, you, he's there, he's still there, upside down, dead, um, but, it's, but because it's dark, and it's just, it's just really unsettling, like, really unsettling, um, yeah, just anything sea creature, giant sea creature related, can't deal, can't deal, but not at all. Um, yeah. Uh, but no, yes. Banjo Kazoon 2 were fantastic games. They are like, they are like childhood games. Um, fully. Like, every one of my family played, played Banjo Tui and Banjo Kazooie. I, I was more a fan of Tui than Kazooie. Probably just because there was more stuff, like more variety in it, I guess. But yeah, no, they, they were just fantastic. Uh, what other games? I feel like there's, an, there's another game. Well, basically any, any Mario game with the eels is, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good, I'm done. Oh, yes. That's right, and then the music just gets like faster and faster, and your anxiety just builds and builds and builds. Oh my goodness. Yes. Or like any game, um, any game, like I think Ratchet and Clank has it, and Jack and Daxter, where you swim too far out of the map, and then basically a giant fish will just come and grab you, um, which always was a jump scare to me, because they're always huge. It's either a tentacle, or I think. I feel like Ratchet and Clank was always a tentacle. Jack and Dexter was definitely like a giant like orange fish. Um, and then in Banjo- oh, and then in Banjo Kazooie. Um, in- oh god, what's the name of it? What's the name of it? Something Cove. The second- the second level. Um, the second level, um, and then as soon as you go into the water, as soon as you can touch the water, um, Snapper? Snacker. Snacker the shark just comes and now just starts chasing you and is like telling you how it wants to eat you. Every single time. And then the, and then the music changes to like a, like a Jaws, a Jaws sound as well. And it's just, oh, it's insane. So you just, you get really, when you're like, oh God, I'm about to plummet to my death into the water you just get your your heart rate goes up as well oh. Oh. And I think even in the I believe even in another there's another level where he appears again I think Rusty Bucket Bay he appears again but I don't know if it's in the same vein but anyway Come on, chakra dash in. You know you want to. Oh, maybe not.
here because it also um that's right the assassin's creed 4 um black flag whenever you go into the underwater sections um there's like one bit in particular i think where you're going around a shipwreck and there's a shark that's roaming around the shipwreck and if he catches you it'll like start attack oh i just i can't remember couldn't deal with that one um and i think the same thing in i want to say shadow of the tomb raider there was a similar one with piranhas and then you had to hide in the bushes oh couldn't deal couldn't deal and then which then reminds me of the other absolute heart pounding was about to cry um uh, if you've played Horizon Forbidden West and you've done the optional cauldrons, if you've, yeah, there's one, and it's purely optional, you don't have to scare yourself, but if you want to, you can. Um, I could see what was about to happen before it did, and I was like, oh, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please don't say it ain't so. Um, but it's a, uh, it's one, it's one of the cauldrons that's right next to the sea. But anyway, so there's obviously there's stuff about water levels, and you have to do underwater bits. And luckily, oh no, there is underwater creatures actually. No, there is. Yeah. Um, luckily, it's not too bad. You, you know, most of the time you. Um, you can fight the, you can bring the crocodiles up on land and all that sort of stuff. So it's not not too bad. But then, in this cauldron, there's one, like the ma like this huge central room which you don't really have to go to very much, um, and you sort of bypass. But then right at the end, towards the end, um, you have to go through the room to get to the other side to a door on the other side that. You're sort of like it's yeah, right towards the end. But then, so as you're going through to it, the you bring the water level up and up and up and up and up um, as you do so. So then you turn a corner and right, you're now standing on the precipice of the room. The water level is quite high, so this the central cage or central walkway is on the ground, fully submerged, and just the top of this circular platform is visible. Above the circular platform is um, is suspended in like a force field containing cell thing. Um, is I think is it like a what's the what's the name of the like the d dinosaur fish? The diplodoc no not diplod uh, the one that's got that looks like a a lapras from Pokemon. It's essentially just a lapras but a robot lapras. So it's suspended and I'm just standing on the edge of this um, of this room looking in and going oh so help me lord if I have to if as soon as I jump down into the water this murfa is gonna um, leave the bubble will dis um, will dissipate he will land on the platform and then jump into the water lo and behold he does just that you drop down and then this guy drops into the water and then starts his little patrol around so you have to get and the other thing is also is that you can't actually get onto the platform either um the platform's too high there's some reason that you can't get onto it so you can't lure him onto land and fight him um that happens later when you can drop onto the platform so you have to basically what the game intends for you to do is to avoid him while you swim to the other side and um, and get to this door so you, you use your focus you find his little um, patrol area so you can see the arrows you can see his path that he's going to follow um, and then it's the other thing which also doesn't help is that the room is I wouldn't say pitch black, but dark enough so you can't really make out too much, but you can just see the gl the blue glow as he like comes like swimming around. It is the most disconcerting, unsettling, 
moment ever in that game it was i was on edge the whole time i think i took far too long because then the other thing too is that i could see on my map where i was supposed to go but because it was so dark i couldn't make out where in the wall i was meant to be going so i was taking way too long trying to find where i needed to go and then because i'm out of cover and i can sort of turn my camera around i can see him coming around the corner right into so his line of sight would be right onto me so i'm like having to furiously swim away to get into some kelp watch just sit there silently as he swims overhead and does another lap and i'm just it was oh it was something else i was i was terrified i was absolutely terrified wasn't helped by the fact that i did have my um wasn't helped by the fact that i had my uh headphones in oh did i get them i got them um yeah so if you ever play forbidden west or if you have played it and you know exactly what i'm talking about um yeah that cauldron is abominable abominable and it's entirely optional too so i didn't even have to do it but i was, I was going for that platinum so i had to Um, foo and I'm actually gonna update the list. Uh, where are we? We're at 20. To 20. Lovely. Um, right, the Madara Sage. I'm not gonna do Blackpool, I'm gonna do that one. And Young Conqueror. Oh. Oh, uh, actually no, the other fight's coming up there, not too bad. That's the other thing. Do you guys, so, if we're, if we're on like the top of like, you know, horror games or just scary games in general, do you find that if you had the sound off or the sound muted or anything like that, it would be less scary? Because I think, what was I playing? I think I was playing Bioshock, the first Bioshock, and I was just getting, I was just jumping at every shadow. But then when I fully just took my headphones off and just played it with no sound, I found it was, I was not nearly as jumpy as I was and found that I could get into it quite well. Yeah, less scary. Yes. Yeah, no, I agree that definitely to have the full experience you need, you need the headphones. But, but for weenies, <laughs> weenies like me, who, uh, who, um, who just get scared at just someone breathing, um, is, uh, yeah, I have, I find that without headphones, I, it's, it's doable, it's doable. Resident Evil 7 and be, oh, 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 I wouldn't be able to deal. Yeah, because I think I was um I was watching the the boy when he was playing when he was playing that and goodness I couldn't even imagine that in the VR. Thing uh, um uh, one of my old bosses at work he I, th I remember him saying it's probably one of the greatest VR experiences he's ever had. He was absolutely terrified, but it was like hands down one of the best VR things he's ever he's ever done. Wonderful. I'm a weenie and proud. Like the Spongebob episode where they're talking about Weenie Hut Jr. Like that is, that's where I belong. I belong there.
In fact, I think the... That's right. When the PlayStation VR came out, um, when the PlayStation VR came out, they had like a PlayStation Worlds game that you could get, which is basically just essentially just heaps of mini demos for what could be possible. Um, but they had one where you go into a shark cage and you just basically you just go all the way down, and there's but right at the bottom where a shark swings past and then like goes to attack the cage and then rips the rips the door off the cage. Um, but then when you get yanked yank back up, it whacks its head on some rocks and then that's the last that's the last you see of the shark. But that was even, I was like, oh no, oh hell no, nah, nah, I'm good, I'm good. Oh yeah, no, I can feel that. Because, yeah, because I suppose, I suppose when you're just like, you're, you kind of, would it, would it be in the kind of sense like where you sort of almost like forget, forget where you are. Like suddenly the whole world's drowned out and you're just like, just... Like, all you can focus on and all you're aware of is just the game. It's your right to be misogynist. <laughs> well, because they, like, like, they do studies on, um... They do studies on the... It's kind of, kind of like in a similar vein how people, like roller coasters they like that feeling they like that thrill feeling i guess it would probably be a, a similar thing like people who like um you know the the kind of feeling that a horror game gives you you just not addicted it makes it sound so weird but you know what i mean it's like the feeling that you get you just like i dig this and i love this and i love the kind of intensity and thing that it's given me i need more of it been taken to use off your life. Like is it like a wasteland? Is there like a particular kind of, I say kind of horror? Like is there a particular like? Do you prefer, you know, stuff like Resident Evil Seven, um, or sort of like slow burn or like, what's the word? Like so you got like your jump scare kind of horror. You've got your um, psychological. I suppose your PT kind of kind of horror where like weird stuff is happening like like the feet is in the sink and then the when the bit where all the paintings turn into eyeballs and it was just like 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 that sort of weird stuff or more like intense action like dead space or something like that is there like a particular kind of horror that you or even like chase scenes if you chuck me ever in a chase scene, I would actually full on not even play the game anymore. I'd be like, no, no, can't even do it. Can't do it. Chase scene even with a count, like a timer. Biggest way for me to just want to turn the whole thing off. Like it all? Nice. Horror generalist, I dig. Yeah, and I've like, like, take PT for example. I've only like, I'm one of those like morbidly curious people where I can't play a horror game. Would never play it myself, but I'm kind of like, I like being in a, in a controlled environment. Like I can pause the YouTube video at any time, or I can click off the tab. Um, so like, I've I've seen playthroughs of PT, um, and I'm just oh like as much as I don't like horror I would I would if if I was a horror fan if PT became like an actual because I think it was it was meant to be like a playable teaser for a Silent Hills game 
something like that anyway so if it got made into an actual game with that particular brand of horror to it i would be excited as a horror fan i can appreciate it just can't play it just can't play it my can't play it myself yeah true and i can hide in the comment section i'm like this this game sucks and they're like why does this game suck it's like because i don't like horror games and they're like uh okay sure you've never played it so you can't say so i've had the amount of times i've had um i've had my mates be like oh um i don't know final fantasy games suck they're stupid and i'm like well have you have you um have you uh have you played any Final Fantasy games? They're like, no, and I'm like, okay, well, you can't say it's bad. You can you cannot be interested in it, but to say it's bad's a whole nother, you know. That's that's now a judgment call based off experience. Test test. It says did your permission to swag out. <laughs> I guess. What do you mean by swag out? Sorry, I'm very behind the times on the hip and happen and lingo. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, fellow ninja, we are we always always welcoming of the of, of anyone with ninja. How how are you doing? There we go, got it, lovely. Oh, clouds are still there. I can feel the heat rising, so hopefully, hopefully building the vegetable garden's not gonna be bad. I really hope it doesn't get hot, like yesterday. Um, right, who was I just facing? Kaguya. What fights have we got? Pain and Yamato after this. Uh, next few fights are alright. Mm. Cause I was actually I was just think thinking because I'm like if I'm because on the um on the thing about the sort of horror, just the thing about horror games. I was watching the boy in fact I watched the boy play a lot of the horror games, more so out of Again, more so out of morbid curiosity than anything. And he was playing the Resident Evil 2 remake. Remaster? Remake. And I think that that is probably like I think of of any horror type games I think a game like that would be my ultimate nightmare. Um, in the sense that the I think just like I always have like chase whenever I'm having um, in, whenever in my dreams I'm being chased my heart rate goes up even though it's just a dream the, just the feeling of being chased by something s sends my heart into overdrive um, in the worst way possible and so a game like Resident Evil 2 where you're being perpetually chased by a unstoppable force at least for a part of the game just that alone like i couldn't i don't think i could think of a worse a worse feeling you're just walking or you're just chilling in a room and then you just hear the footsteps as he's coming i would cry i'd actually cry just yeah and even and then in any game in any game at all where there's like a chase sequence of some kind especially when you can't see the person or when you're trying to hide from them um that is is just and especially when it's someone that you can't beat either 
If it's someone that you actually can't defeat, that just sends even, even worse. I think um, one of the the black sheep of the Tomb Raider family, um, Angel of Darkness on the PS2, which I think I pull, which we had, I did play it. Um, I don't think I ever finished it. I got close to finishing it, but it was just, it was actually extremely difficult. I now think about it, but there's a particular level t towards the end of the game we are in an apartment building we are in someone's apartment and you're in someone's apartment and basically the bad guys send us the cleaner in and it's essentially just a dude with rocket launcher or flamethrower or something but essentially what it is is you have to get out of the basically he, you're in you're in the apartment block so you're sort of on like the something floor of it and so every now and then you'll see so he walks into the apartment building, so you see him walking into the lobby and then maybe like two minutes later you'll see you'll, you'll cut back to him walking up the stairwell and so basically you've, you've got a set amount of time before he comes into the apartment um, and starts like hunting you down and I just remember just feeling this this pit in my stomach the entire time. I think I failed it quite a few times. Um, until you're actually... I don't believe that there's a way... I don't believe there's a way to do what you need to do and get out before he comes into the apartment. So he'll always come into the apartment at one point. Um, I just doubled up on a fight. Did I double up on a fight? No, I didn't. I didn't double up on a fight. Okay, never mind. Um, so that, and that probably took me a good... I want to say like seven tries. And I was like nine years old as well. Which, which didn't help, didn't help things either. Why does everyone do screams of death at the end? Goodness. Okay. Um, yeah, Beto and Kai. Okay, so I'm on, am I on flight 84? Yes. Okay, once I get to flight 92, um, I will call it a day. then we will be at 6,200. Oh, for, okay, so I'll give you, I'll give you the backstory. Give you the backstory. So, it has always been a dream of mine, <laughs> I guess, um, that for some reason, I don't know why, I just, just want to, um, is... Uh, in a Naruto game, or the Naruto game that has the largest roster, which at this point will be this one, I want to do every single character versus every single other character. Just cause. For some reason, I've just always wanted to do that. So, I decided, you know what? Enough talking about it. Let's do it. So I calculated how many fights would that be. So it was 11,227 fights. Um, and so basically every day, well, I say every day, um, 
on Thursdays and, and Thursdays and Sundays. Um, I just do just do it. Just just keep going. So essentially, what I do is I I've got all of the the I've got a giant spreadsheet. All of my um, all of the matchups on there, um, and I randomly just generate a whole bunch of them. Um, and I've just got a big long list, and I just just start from one and go to the rest. So after I think after these two, so after I do foos, I'll um, I'll be at six thousand two hundred and six. Um, which, weirdly enough, is only about 44%. I'm not even halfway yet. And I've been going since April last year. Then again, that also being said, I would be probably halfway by now if. Um, if I was a bit more efficient at the start. Because right at the start, like what I did, which in hindsight was a stupid move, was generate all the fights as I do them. So bring up a little spinny wheel and generate all the fights then. So I think the first, like day one, I only ended up doing like 30 fights in two hours. Um, so that eventually stopped <laughs> when I'm like, okay, this is gonna, cause then I calculate, okay, well, if at this rate, if I, let's say I'm doing two days a week at 30 fights a day, how long is it going to take me? It was something like three and a half years to do the ball. So I'm like, uh, okay, let's see if I can shorten that. Um, so then I just ran, just pre-generated all the fights. Um, but then what I wanted to do is every single fight I had to finish with an ultimate, uh, which started off well, but eventually the, when the AI would just get too redonkulous and just kept dodging or, or I was just being too rubbish um, the fights would drag on a long time just because I'm trying to get in the last hit so then I eventually did away with that because then I think that was I'd probably get about like 56 to 60 fights in two hours by doing that um, and then so I did away with that completely and then the final iteration is essentially I just do fights um, just do fights as quickly as I can um, so I can average in about two hours I can do about eight, 80 fights in two hours is sort of my my um, sort of baseline so so that all being said at the rate I go at the rate I'm going should I say um, I will finish by September this year. Um, will be day, I think day 150. I think should should be the last day. Um, yeah, so we still got quite a, quite a way to go. Um, and that is me. And that is the 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 long and storied history of why there is a fight's remaining encounter at the top. And to be honest, I, th I even I thought by now, I would have been like, okay guys, it was fun for the first couple of times, but I think I'm going to have to call, you know, call it quits here. I haven't, I haven't gotten to that point. And it's like, it's like these streams just tend to be just, I just do fight after fight and just chat about whatever comes to mind. Um, you know, it's more like it's essentially almost just like a just chatting stream, if anything, really. Um, whereas, like my other streams would be, um, you know, a bit, a bit more like, you know, whatever game I'm playing, they'll be um, more focused on that. Um, yeah. So that is that is what this all is. <laughs> And um, 
I still haven't thought, and, and I probably need to probably have a good sit, sit down and think about it. Um, when I hit, hit, when it is when it is dawn of the final day, um, I have got absolutely no idea what I'm gonna do to close this whole saga off. I've got absolutely no idea. Um, am I gonna like celebrate? Am I gonna do like a special? recap stream am i gonna do am i gonna deck the whole place out in balloons and confetti to celebrate i've got no idea am i gonna give myself a prize it's gonna it's just gonna do it all over again see the funny thing is because i was thinking okay well this is the largest roster on like the next gen current gen consoles the largest roster in the ultimate ninja ps2 games was ultimate ninja 5 so why didn't i just do it with that game it's like a complete it's a different style to the storm games it's all like it's like side scrolly arcade style but why don't i just do it with those games <laughs> which i think i'm just trying to see what their roster size is because it was something because i think i calculated beans because i think i had a look and it's only like 80 no probably not even 80 characters there's a hundred and there's 108 characters just in the base game because the other thing to note with this is i'm not including the boruto or dlc characters i'm just purely just the base game so i was thinking oh do i do a separate one with the boruto things i'm like no i'll just keep i'll just keep it to the base game um but then I think I calculated um, So hang on. Ultimate Ninja 5 roster PS2 Do it with all, like every game do you mean? God that would be a feat wouldn't it? Um, Ultimate 5, how many is there? I mean, I could. I could do it with every game. I mean, Ultimate Ninja 1, I mean, I could do that in a in a day. Because that's only... How many characters? They've only got... Like, 10 characters? 12 characters in that one? So that's 12... Yeah, I could, probably, I could prob probably do that one in a day. Ultimate Ninja 2 and 3. Well, Ultimate Ninja 2, they'll probably take a couple of weeks. Ultimate Ninja 3, probably a couple of weeks, weeks more than that. Ultimate Ninja 4. Uh, Ultimate Ninja 4 and Ultimate Ninja 5 are probably very they're similar in roster size, now that I think about it. Yes, no, I have played them all, um, including the PSP. <laughs> PSP one. Yeah, so I pl I've played the Ultimate Ninja 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on the PS2, and I played Storm 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution on the 360, which, that's another, that's another one. So hang on, playable characters. All Konoha 11, Sasuke, Uchiha, and the three Sab Sand siblings. Okay, um... We've got Sai and Susuke Orange. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So that takes me up to Jiraiya. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's 40. Forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five. Forty-five characters, really? That doesn't seem right. That seems too small. Oh. 
played all the storm except Boruto DLC and ah yeah the Boruto DLC is all right I guess it's pretty it's pretty decent if you like Boruto um Ultra one you can skip that like there's no story mode other than just like there's literally no story mode um and there's like like I say like 12 characters so you could probably you could skip you could comfortably skip Ultra Ninja 1 and not miss out on anything Ultra Ninja 2 is actually pretty is probably one of my favorites purely from like the story or the the story follows the story to a point and then there's like a another arc which is purely original I think there's like an original story off the back of that as well um, yeah and I just and I love the um, I think my favorite thing about it is the um, uh, it's the um, is the ultimate jutsus there was like three levels that you could do depending on how much chakra you have um, and they were all top-notch they were fabulous yeah and I think actually because Ultimate Ninja 2 was my first Naruto game so that's probably why I love it so much as well actually now I think about it and Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 was my first Storm game so I played I've played that game god knows how many times um, and what are we at we're at 6200 all right <gasps> bull what up you've come a hey, first i'm doing very well how are you second you've caught me once again at the tail end <laughs> the tail end of the stream just as i was about to get off um oh actually just trying to think 10 30. You know what? I'll do another 10 fights. You know what? I'll do that. I'm gonna do that. Because it's not it's not sunny outside. So I'm not in any danger of having to build the vegetable garden in this blistering sun. It is humid though. I will give it that. But I'm gonna do another 10 fights. outside in server outside is a thing is a um it's a thing that like so you have your house and then around the house um is this thing called outside and uh, most of the time it is awful and a horrendous experience but sometimes it can be fun yeah <laughs> and bull i will be um I will be, uh, I will be there when you when you do FF7, most definitely. Um, I will probably lurk for a little bit of it, um, purely because me and the boy will be mate, will be planting some broccoli, <laughs> seeing seeing how my first my first attempt at a vegetable garden goes. But I'll be there. I'll be lurking anyway. Or if I'm not, then I'll be, I'll be uh, doing my comments as usual. Um, who is that? Toby Dunzo and Toby White. No, not that one. And that one. I want to play against viewers. At this at this stage, probably not for this stream. I keep thinking about that because I, I get I do get a lot of um, a lot of people asking. Um, I think what I might do is at some point don't know when they'll be um, at some point I will I will do a playing with viewers stream um, just trying to think when that when that would be at some point um, pu and purely because um, purely because I tend to give myself about two hours to two and a half hours um, for these um, for these for the what you call it um, for the day the days where I chip chip away at the fights remaining um, so once I've done my like my 80 to 90 fights generally doesn't give me much time to do um, to do viewer things so I, I want to do I want to do a um, 
like just a purely dedicated playing playing with viewer stream at some point. In fact, I might actually just get up to a hundred fights today. Goodness. Here we are. And Itachi. Okay. So I've got. For this is 96. Yes. So I've got four. Do four more fights after this. Oh yay! Okay, I've now got Choji and Chio. Uh, uh, actually, this the Chio the Chio one might actually not be too bad. Because the problem I had when I last played as Chio was I was facing against Ten Ten. And as soon as you've got a puppet user who is facing against someone like Ten Ten, it is just hell in a handbasket, I swear to god. But because Choji um, needs to get up close, it means getting Chio's ultimate off is way easier. And the more I play as, as adult Choji, the more I actually really like it because he does so much melee damage it's insane how much melee damage he does okay chia and choji Lovely, thank you once again for jumping to my ultimate. <laughs> oh, goodness, okay. Right now, going for the kill. Maybe not quite. Just body slam the puppets against him. Fabulous. Favorite character to play. Ooh. Probably Minato, I think. Just trying to, yeah, I think I think Minato would probably be my favorite, just because his Rasengan's, just because of his speed, I think. And probably a close second would be 
Hmm. Close second would probably be Yugita or um, Third Raikage. Just because he hits hits super hard for some reason. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll say those three. What about yourself? Goodness. There we go. Fabulous. Um, you know what? We may sneaky. I'm gonna do one more matchup after this one just because it gets us to a nice clean number. Because if we ended here, it'd be 6192. But if I do 6190, then that's better. Then that's a lot better. Nice and clean. Top three, probably one of the Sasuke's Minato. Oh, yeah. Oh, Kakashi's actually a good one. A good one to do. Nice. Yeah, and I think I think of the of the Sasuke's, definitely the his um, white white jacket one, like the one that's not a thing in particular. Like I just call it Sasuke or Chibaru, um, but that one I find to be I tend that that tends to be the one I have an easiest time, an easier time with. Uh, right, Mifune. And Sussery. White Robe, that's the one. I find that one by far to be the easiest. The one that I, I struggle with the most is actually his... The Rinna Sharingan one and the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan one. For some reason I find those ones to just... They just don't work for me. For whatever reason. This beef today, you beast. Now, because because if I go with my theory, if I go with my theory that the AI goes through cycles of difficulty, I think I'm on one of the like the lull cycles where he's just the AI is just not doing anything he is actually and it takes a lot of like I'd say trying to get his ultimate to hit takes a lot of skill in the sense that you need to um, in the sense that getting the timing right of it is can be probably the biggest challenge And I think of all the puppet users, Sasori is probably my f the one I prefer. Just because he doesn't have stupid BS BS jutsu that um, don't do anything like Kankuro's, which I don't. Has anyone ever played as Kankuro and gotten their his jutsu to be of any value whatsoever? 
I say nay. Come on. Puppet users I despise. <laughs> I despise them with an absolute burning passion. The same with, with Tintin. The same with Tintin. I just cannot for the life of me um, seem to get any value out of Tintin whatsoever. So I just spam her ultimates. Spam her ultimates is like the only way to get any decent damage out of her. Right, this should end it. Fabulous. Okay, dokay. So, update Lilliest, because we are down to <gasps> 6,190. Fabulous. Can't even be relevant in the games. <laughs> Cuts deep. But you're completely right. You are so right. <laughs> when have puppy users been have have had anything good about them other than the fact when Sussery goes into beast mode? That's about it. That is literally it. Um Alright. But alas, I must depart for this. Again, it's still cloudy, thank God. Morning. Um, and tomorrow, because tomorrow is actually a day off here in the lovely New Zealand. Um, so I will be back on with another trail stream. Because I am at, in the, I think it's the final dungeon of Cold Steel 1. So I'm I'm really excited to keep going with that. I really, wanted, I really just want to keep going. Um, so that will be me tomorrow. And then other than that. Thursday will be day 67 of this gorgeous game where we're going to try and get to 6,100. That's my goal. But anyway, and no, it, it, it is a, it is, it is the tutorial instead of, and thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow, SS Ninja. It is much appreciated as always. And your company, everyone's company is appreciated but no i will have to depart for, for today i hope you'll have a lovely fabulous morning afternoon or night wherever y'all is um stay fresh stay rested stay hydrated stay great i'll catch you later ball um and ss ninja i look forward to seeing you again um but no thank you all and have a great one and bye